So what I'd like to do is show you how to log into the graphical user interface via the web browser for your IP NVR. This is uh, current for all of the DOS NVRs and even for some of the previous generations as well. So I hope you find this useful. From my web browser, I'm using Chrome at the moment. I type in the IP address for my device. In this case, I know it's 192.168.1.201. Type that one in and up comes this particular uh, screenshot here. So I can put my username, my password, my language, and I'm obviously running a non-active X because I'm running in Chrome and Chrome doesn't support active X. Put in the default password for this NVR, submit that, and then I'm in the NVR itself. Fantastic, except I can't see anything from any of the cameras that are connected to it. And if I go into my configuration and go into, let's say, one of the video settings or display settings pages, I keep getting this error popping up on the side here. So what I need to do for the first time is uh, get Adobe Flash Player, in other words, allow it to run. Generally speaking, that's about it. You may need to click on the bar up at the top here and allow it for your particular site. Once you've done that, now each of these windows could be a camera view. Uh, I haven't set up any of the cameras yet, so they won't appear to be on those, uh, those windows on the right hand side. But all I've got to do is tap one of them and it would bring it up if there was a camera connected. From this page, oh hello, I've set up some smart settings on this one. From here, I can go into the configuration as if I was in front of the NVR itself. I can do most of the same features uh, using the admin login, except from my playback page, if I click on this one, flash has an error, reload the page, go back to my playback, and there it is. Tick on my camera view from here, choose my selection in terms of what type of recording, what days I've recorded it for, Query it from here and then my recordings would appear across the bottom. There is no way currently to download your footage from the Flash version of this onto your computer. You need to use the desktop software, the VMS software, or you need to plug a USB stick directly into the device and use uh, the, a screen connected to it to back up your footage. From here, obviously we've got our preview screen. So from here, you've got an interface that you can vary. So you can have a single camera view, a four camera view, a nine camera view. This is a uh, an eight channel NVR, and I can pick and choose which bank of four cameras I'm looking for. So the first four or the second four cameras, or I can show all uh, eight plus a spare camera slot at the end there. On the left hand side, you can see that we've got uh, a camera icon and an S camera icon. The S is for the substream, so if you've got a lower resolution substream coming out of your cameras and you might be having a bit of trouble with network bandwidth, you can select that one to view it instead. All you have to do is select a window on the right hand side, as indicated by the red square around the outside of this, and then pick which camera goes where. So you can have these in any particular configuration you might want them in. Uh, it doesn't have to be in sequence, it can be in the preferred order that your customer or that you for yourself. So turn all of those off and on the right hand side you've got some basic controls for PTZ, zoom focus and the aperture adjustments if that's available. The brightness and contrast and so on all show up from here as well. If there's a motion detection or alert going on I can tap on this one to bring up information about that one. And now let's go across. On our playback screen you've obviously got the choice of the channels along the left hand side here. When you're viewing this through the web interface, you can generally only choose one channel at a time. If you want to view multiple channels, again, the VMS desktop software or plugging directly into the NVR with a screen, uh, that would work as well. From the right hand side, you've obviously got the dates that you can select. You've got the different types of alert that you're looking for. If you're looking for one of the intelligent detection types or smart detection types, they're often called. You choose your cross line, you choose your item left loss, or so on, and run your query here. Across the bottom here, what recordings there are will appear along this bar. And it's a 24 hour bar for that channel. From there, double click into the period that you're interested in and it'll start playing. Or click and drag along there until you find the recording that you're interested in viewing. Across the top, we also have the log. Again, the playback screen and flash seem to have some issues. So just resetting, uh, reloading the page brings it up. From here is my log and I can query 
all the different types of operation from there and then I can create what I need to see. So if I go into my alarms and I'm looking for motion detecting end, I choose a date and a uh, date to start and finish and I, this shows me how many are on a page, I've got 22 at the moment, I query that one and there are no recordings because there's no hard drive, so, well not in this particular unit anyway. Beautiful, go across to my configuration and again flash seems to have cracked an error, it's great fun. Alright, my configuration page is from here and I've got full interface the same as I would on the NVR itself. My time settings, my channel parameters, my display settings and so on will all come up on here. I can set and change any of these if I was connected to any cameras and viewable. So I go across to my cameras themselves. I'm going to delete all of these because I was playing with it before. Go into my equipment search, search for my devices and I can find my S-Link cameras, my i8 cameras and all of my OnViv ones, including a high vision camera that's connected into the same network as this. From here, with S-Link cameras and an S-Link NVR, all I need to do is uh, select them, choose a channel and let them do their thing. But I would normally recommend doing these individually and making sure they're done correctly. You can hit the auto bind key here for it. And what this should do is go through each of the cameras and connect them to uh, where it can see them separately and give them their own IP addresses and so on. However, I may have been playing with the device manager tool. I've set some of these manually and now they don't talk over S-Link the same way they used to. Best way to do a camera system and anything else like that is to use the software to assign IP addresses for all of your cameras. Make sure that they're rock solid. Assign those IP addresses in the modem router, which I'll show you in another video. And then you've got them there forever and ever, or at least until they change the modem and things have to change back again. Beautiful. And that is the web interface and configuration for the NVR. Hope you found that useful.